Elites, what's going on? We live action. You already know what it is. It's me, Captain Advisor Days, here to bring you this week's Bleach Chapter Review. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You're probably thinking the same thing that I was thinking. Like, damn, the chapter came out early. Now, shout out to Charles' Anime World. It's a good YouTuber. Check him out. He notified me on Facebook that the chapter was out. So I'm like, okay, damn. And then shout out to everyone else on my Facebook fan page who notified me as well. But the overall thing with this chapter, uh, I honestly felt this was a very short chapter. Now, of course, this is chapter uh, 548 titled Thin and Ice. And it starts out, we see Omega. He's like just wondering what happened and everything. Here comes his sister. She's saying, come play with me, don't leave me. And he tells her, you know, look, I'm not leaving you, but I have to do what I have to do. You know, I have to protect everyone, my, you know, the squad members, the family, you know, the Serate, because I'm a member of the Go Take 13. Now, all, all of a sudden, there's a big explosion. He looks behind him, and we see Star Knight K, as known as, you know, BG9. And that's when he uh, made her realize, like, okay, this is the guy who stole Captain Soyphone's uh, Bunkai. So it cuts over back to Basby and Toshiro. And, of course, they give each other the introduction. And Basby, he reveals he is Star Knight H for the heat, obviously, because, you know, he has to fire. And the thing is, the squad mates, they notice, they look, picked up a piece of ice from Toshiro's uh, Shikai. And they realize, like, damn, this piece of uh, ice is real thin. Like, I'm surprised this blocked us, you know, this blocked the fire with this thin-ass piece of ice, and they were concerned about uh, Captain Yutsugaya. So anyway, at that point, Rangiku, she tells all the squad members get to safety and everything, and Basby, he's just laughing like, damn, you think you can actually stop me with these, uh, with this ice? I guess it's just pathetic. And he was saying, the more you keep doing this, it's just gonna, you know, make things more human. And so Shiro, he was thinking like, come on, like, yeah, keep doing that just a little bit more, because we all know how his abilities work. And at that point, he actually admits, he tells uh, his lieutenant, um, Ron Geek was like, you know what, I can't keep this up too long just fighting him by myself. I'm going to need your help. And she thinks it's cute that he needs her help and everything. So they work together. They use both of their Shikai's because, you know, when she had used Heineko to make the ash, she had put thin sheets of layers of ice around it. It made like this, it's this, like, uh, vacuum ice wall, the way I was explaining it. And the thing is, Basby's fire could not penetrate it. It couldn't get through it. And the thing is, just like we're all serious, damn it, they have to explain <laughs> what happened. And if it, But if you think about it, I guess that's just how it has to go because imagine reading a series when a certain character or characters do something with no explanation. You kind of be wondering, like, damn, what the hell happened? Like, I, you know, you, sometimes so a further explanation is uh, appreciated, but sometimes, on the other hand, it's not needed. Because sometimes you can't see what clearly happened. But in this case, it was a little bit interesting to see those two work together and use those Shikais. And it's just crazy how these two were, you know, uh, right under, you know, Ichigo's private uh, machine. So at that point, he tries to attack again. It doesn't go through. And Toshiro, he tells him, like, how many times I have to tell you, it's not going to get through. And he points his Zanpato right at Basby. I think he said, how, uh, what did he say? Let's see if this, uh, vacuum ice blade can pierce you. And it pierces him, it penetrates Basby. And bam, that was the end of the chapter. Also, I think at the bottom it says something about, uh, the battle gets more intense and I think a, a more shocking revelation. But overall, like I said, that was the chapter. My thoughts on it, it to me, it was just okay. Now, the, the main important things in the chapter was basically, um, to me, Toshiro's explanation of his Bunkai, you know, and I know I didn't talk about that, you know, during the recap, but that was, like, to me, the, the main important thing, because we got to know something that was brand new about Toshiro's Bunkai, how he stated that, basically, there's a big gap in power between, you know, his Shikai and, and, and his Bunkai, and he said, but the thing is, the main difference is when he's in Bunkai, he can, you know, summon a lot of ice. Like the ice consumption is a lot higher than what it is when he's in Shikai. So that's about the only main difference. And, you know, to make up for that also, that's why he was doing all the training. But the other thing, cutting back to the beginning of the chapter, I did like the fact that we got to see BG9. BG9, I am interested in what he's about. But another thing I noticed, the way BG9 showed up, he didn't just appear out of the shadows like the other Star Knights. It seemed like he just landed real hard, you know, or whatever. Like I said, you just see an explosion, and Omega turns around like, what the hell? But for the first time ever, even though this chapter, to be honest, it was full of characters 
I didn't care too much for like uh, Basby. He he he's cool. All right, he's cool, but he's not one of the star knights. I'm like heavily interested in. Uh, so Shiro. Sometimes he can be hit and miss with me. Uh, Rangiku and Omega. Come on now, he not. Nah. So, however, Basby, I'm not Basby, damn, BG9. Here's about the one character I really care for in this chapter. But, however, like I said, as a reviewer, I have to overlook those uh, tiny things and look at the overall things I noticed. So, with Omega versus BG9, I, I get a feeling it's going to be a cat and mouse chase kind of thing. Sort of like with Bear Guy and Omega. You know, he was just running around chasing them, chasing them until Soy Fong showed up. Maybe that might happen. I mean, I give an A for effort for, uh, well, I shouldn't even say effort, or A for confidence that Omega had that he realized, like, you know what, I'm a member of the Gote 13. You know, I'm not going to run. I'm going to, you know, see what's going on. I'm going to try to protect this person, protect that person. That's cool, but let's face it. Omega, he is completely useless. There, there is no way he will be able, he should, he should not stand uh, stand a chance against BG9. I mean, BG9, we all know he has Soy Phone's Bunkai, which is very powerful when it comes to destructive destructive capacity but we st we also have to keep in uh, mind all the other things bg9 can do and maybe we get an explanation as to why he didn't come out of the shadows what the hell is he because it looks like he's wearing the helmet i'm pretty sure that's not for sure there's a reason behind it so i think he's to he, he now nah, he should kill made that i, I wouldn't mind that happening <laughs> I mean, i'm sorry um back to the toshiro and rangiku thing like I said, it was cool and interesting to see two Shikais work together like this because, and it made sense, the way it worked, you know, because that sheet of ice that he put up the first time, the fire didn't go through it, even though it was real thin. So, we, he, he have to ash, you know, to burn ash, I mean, come on, that's why I think that was pretty smart, you know, let's combine these ashes with this ice that he couldn't, you know, melt in the first place. I'm pretty sure of, uh, eventually... With enough force, he probably could have just melted all the ice, but I'm pretty sure that's why Toshiro realized that and he asked for the help of uh, Ron Giku. But, Basby, we got to see what his letter is. You know, H, the heat. That's another good thing about the chapter. But with him getting pierced like that, I, I'm, I know for a fact he's not down for the cow. For everyone who's been reading and watching Bleach, we already know what Kakubo does. You know, right when you think someone is dead, they're, they're not dead. However, he did fool us with Old Man Yama. I remember Old Man Yama got slashed right here and said to be continued. So many people was thinking like, oh, he's just really wounded. You know, he's not down for count. And next thing you know, next chapter, his upper half just falls over. But however, with Basby, the reason why I think that this, is, this is different because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, it's safe to say he still has that final holy form. And all we did, we just seen him throw flames. What other techniques does he have with those flames? I mean, and I'm going to have to look into that even more. Like, he's the Quincy, but he can just use, uh, you know, the flames. Every, a lot of people has really an object or something. Like, um, the guy who took Toshiro's Bunkai, I should know his name, damn, because he's one of my favorite Star Knights. He has the claws and whatnot, but we see Basby uses uh, fire. But, yeah, I just think he's heavily damaged. But when he got hit like that, I'm like, damn, man, like, Bath, he went to the blue vein. Like, I, I guess Toshiro, he acted too smart. So as he pointed, he said what he had to say, and fired. I guess he moved too fast for Basby to use the blue vein. But uh, I honestly think um, at this point, we all know villains lose. They all lose. But for him to lose against Toshiro and to got I mean, Toshiro and Toshiro and Ron Giku, I mean, he can't use Bunkai. She hasn't learned Bunkai. Yeah, that little strategy thing is cool, but it seems like he has more tricks in his bag. Like, he has so much more left than opposed to what they can offer. I mean, he can try to use keto. They can both try to use keto. They can try to do that, but even still, I don't know. So that's my overall thoughts about the uh, chapter, at least. I mean, this review seems short because the chapter seems short. Not a lot of, whole, you know, a whole bunch didn't happen. You know, not a whole lot went down, so... I don't know, but next week, like I said, um, Omeda should die. He's probably not going to die next week. I know that for a fact. I believe it might pick up where Basby and Toshiro left off, or it might, or we might see another matchup. That's that's one thing I want to see. And that's another good thing I can give this chapter. We see another matchup, you know, BG9 and Omeda, even though I won't even call that a fight. <laughs> but other than that, that's my review for this week. Give me your thoughts, comments, and concerns. Again, as always, thanks for watching. Captain signing out.